illness, disease, cancers, uh, things like diabetes, heart disease and things like that are lifestyle driven. Simple changes to your everyday habits will make a huge difference to your longevity of life, to your general energy levels and happiness. Um, and also to your working environment as well, because you know, it's, it's, it's imperative. And then one of the major factors, well, one of the major factors that we all kind of lead to another day is our health. We all go, I'm going to get fitter when I've got more time, or I'm going to eat healthier when I've got a little bit more time. I'm just speaking generally, because you all, some of you might be doing that right now. But in general terms, the reason we say that is because the stats are really scary, really, really scary. Um, the stats that are out there today, and the facts, the medical facts, and the, 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 um, what the experts are producing these days, um, certain doctors say that diabetes isn't reversible. Well, it is. There's doctors like Dr. Robert Young, a uh, phenomenal guy, who's reversing diabetes. Um, but the other stats, oh, ladies, um, the other stats that are really, really scary, one in every three minutes, someone's diagnosed with diabetes. I don't want to get really low, like, uh, kind of down in with some facts and start really getting like negative with you, but I need to get the facts out first because it's quite staggering. One in every three minutes someone's diagnosed with diabetes, and that's all to do with something what we call is over acidic, when our bodies get over acidic, and that we can guarantee those facts, but it's all backed by you know, Houston University, Japanese Ministry of Health, um, Loughborough University, various uh, research that we've got that will back up those facts as well. One in every three people, so that's a third of you here, hopefully not you guys, but the population in general, will suffer from cancer. Um, that's quite a staggering fact. Since 1904, it used to be one in 60. Okay, they died from other things, but there was, there was some other facts involved. And then one in two is going to suffer from heart disease. Right? That's the stats in the UK. If you look on heart, um, the British Heart Foundation or Heart Disease Trust, etc., etc. Um, so there's some quite stat, some, some quite scary stats, and there's there's some genuine reasons why that is, and it's all to do from the research. I've spent two years studying research. I studied biotechnology to start with, and um, just give you a quick background. I studied biotechnology, went into the corporate world, got a taste of sales, did did quite well in sales, and then I, I went through. Um, and then I invested in the water business, Japanese water business. I remember the time my mum got it, um, back in 98, and she was given six months to live. And I didn't believe it. We were like, 55, six months to live? No way. This doesn't, I don't believe this. There's got to be, I believed in hope at the time. And um, I started looking at alternative medicines and therapies. And I found I came across some Japanese research just on pure water, what pure water does to the body. If you're 70% water, you've got a 70% chance that anything wrong with you is water related. It makes sense, does it not? If you're 70% water, you've got 70% chance that something that you're taking on board is going wrong in your mechanics internally, it's about your environment. So we looked at this research, and the Japanese Ministry of Health produces the research. And any of this research you guys want, if you ask me, I can produce it for you. I'm not going to bore you now, because we've only got um, half an hour today. They, they did a test with just pure vitamin C and pure water with like over 500 cancer patients and they had an 80% remission rate, which is phenomenal. Now cancer, there's a video I wanted to show you on cancer just to show you. Does anyone know how cancer starts? No? Is, there, is anyone interested in how cancer starts? Fairly? Yeah. Does anyone, like, I'm sure we've all lost someone from cancer or known someone that's gone from cancer. Cancer, cancer starts literally by deformed cells. It's deformed cells that starts cancer. Cells split. Um, I'll show you a quick video. This animation will show how cancer develops. Cancer is caused by the cells of the body changing so that they grow in an uncontrolled way. Click the navigation arrows below the animation screen to play, pause, rewind or fast forward the animation. Your body is made up of cells. Nearly all the cells in the body have a nucleus, which is the control centre of the cell. The nucleus contains genes, 
which control everything about the cell, including how the cell grows and when it will die. Damage to genes is the underlying cause of cancer. The damage may be inherited or caused by other factors such as cigarette smoke. The cells of your body divide to make more cells so that your organs and tissues can grow and repair themselves. The nucleus controls this division. In cancer, the cells divide in an uncontrolled way and often more quickly than normal cells. In many cases, the cells form a lump called a tumour. Cancerous tumours can spread into surrounding normal tissue. Not all tumours are cancerous. Some do not infiltrate the surrounding tissues, nor do they spread to other parts of the body. These are known as benign tumours. Tumours that invade the surrounding tissue and spread to other parts of the body are known as malignant tumours, or cancer. Cancer cells can invade blood and lymph vessels. These provide a route for spread to other parts of the body to form secondary cancers. This is called metastasis. My mother was given six months to live. Um, and we went to specialist after specialist after specialist. And I, I, I looked at these other facts and research, and I didn't believe the specialist in chemotherapy and the chemotherapy she was going for. She had a spindle cancer called Leonardo scarapoma, a very rare form of cancer. Trust my mother to get a very rare one. It was like she was quite unique. Um, so these cancers, the spindle cancer, and it was like that, quite an aggressive, like spread through the body, but it was an aggressive spindle cancer which turned into a tumour which grew very quickly. She'd have like the size of a gala melon grow and then have it removed. And she'd keep going back and get it removed. And the doctors kept saying, she's got about two more weeks. But previous to this, I changed all the water in the house. And every bit of water she drank wasn't chlorinated, because it's a past parmigenic. There's various other factors. I'm not trying to scare you, but I need to put as pure water as possible into my mother. Anyway, long story short, she lasted for ten years. I couldn't get her to change her nutrition, and I couldn't get her to stop smoking. That was the only two things. But she got to see my little boy being born, which was phenomenal. And there were some other factors. So just by little changes by her water intake, she lasted for 10 years. Doctors couldn't work it out either because every time she went into intensive care once or twice a year for those 10 years spell, and she still lasted. And she used to go to Spain twice a year. That was her goals. There's another important thing about visualising goals, which I'll get into another situation. But she used to go once in June for a birthday and once in December. Anyway, but how important that was to me was phenomenal. So that sent me on this journey. Um, now, nutrition is a massive, massive impact. Your nutritional value in your day. Now, does anyone know um, what your acidity and alkaline levels are in your body, or what it means? Or anyone heard of pH? Right. Well, pH, for those that aren't aware of pH, is as important, or maybe more, than your actual body temperature. Because if your pH of your blood moves, one or two degrees, you're going to die. So how does the blood maintain pHs when we're sticking Coca-Cola down our necks, when we're eating beefs or processed foods, which are really high acidic value things. For instance, in a Coca-Cola, a can of Coke, it takes 32 glasses of water to neutralise that one of Coke. <coughs> and in Diet Coke, if you think you're doing yourselves a favour, and you're not, Diet Coke actually puts weight on. Um, Research from Houston University, it's quite interesting, it's got aspartame, <coughs> so it's not bioavailable to your bodies. So if it's not bioavailable, it has a reaction to your body. And that's why 32% um, of people who drink Diet Coke actually get, put more weight on. The reason is it sends this false message to your brain, so you've got sugar, your brain works out, it's a bit more clever than that, you go, hang on a second, I've only got sugar, so it starts storing things, it's called survival. This is, this is a cross-section here, the actual alkaline level is above 7, and acid is below 7. Things like soft cheeses, pastas, pastries, soundfish, sh soundfish? Soundfish, even. Um, beef, white bread, coffee, it all, all is around the 3 to 4 on acidity. That's, a, that's not far off battery acid, right? Um, and hydrochloric acid. It's only one away from hydrochloric acid. So when we're building all the acid up inside us, there's a reason for certain things, other things that happen to you. It's all about acidity. Now, other things 
like carrots, almonds, apples, even lemons and limes, even though they're acidic, they're alkaline and forming. So when they go into your body, they have an alkalining property. So it's quite good to drink lemon and lime water, like the fresh lemon, fresh lime juice, squeeze in some water. That increases your alkalinity. If you got your alkalinity to about 7.5, which we can, I can anyone that wants to try to test their acid levels, I can do it afterwards. Simple pH test, you know those things at school that you wonder what it was all about. Well, hopefully we're going to find out. Um, if you've got your alkalinity to about 7.5, naturally you can lose up to a pound a day. The reason you can't lose weight, how many people know people that goes to the gym or work at, works out or goes on diets that can't lose weight? <coughs> anyone know? Go on. One person in the background, yeah. Two in the front. Some people are nodding. Um, the reason is it's all to do with acidity. When you hold acidity in your body, it can't let go of fat because it keeps it for survival mode. The reason is is because if your body is over acidic, the body then pushes it out to fat and it's, it's keeping your main arteries and everything protected, your, your organs and things like that, all protected from this over acidic environment. So if you increase your alkalinity, your acidity reduces, then your fat goes away. Your energy levels go through the, literally through the ceiling. You get more energy. There's various easy factors to do that. Now, that if, if you can just increase your alkalinity to like 7.5, your whole world changes. Cancer can't grow in an alkaline environment. It can't grow. Fact. This is the textbook of uh, physiology. Right? <laughs> it's basically, we are an alkaline environment. It's only when we get acidic that is when the problems start hitting us. Um, you're not going to learn this in, in everyday life because pharmaceutical companies won't make any money, basically. And I might be sceptical about that, but that's the fact. If there was a cure, and we're all looking for that quick cure, the pill cure, you know, we take a pill that cures it, it's not going to happen. You've spent 20 years of doing something, you're going to take a couple of months to reverse it. But there are simple ways. Uh, I, if you want to go to the gym, go to the gym, that's fantastic, that's really good. But a lot of us don't have time to go to the gym, a lot of us don't like going to the gym. What you can do, 10 minutes in the morning, as soon as you get up, speed your metabolism up by tenfold. So that's really important. If you want more energy in the day, do 10 minutes of exercise in the morning, get a self stepping machine, running up and down the steps, uh, up and down your stairs, various other exercises that you can do which can give you programs to do. That will speed your metabolism up tenfold. And it will start telling your body, it's all right, you're going to get some food later on. And the reason that works is like, did you ever see any fat, fat cavemen? Or cave women? No? No? Okay. Um, the reason that is, is because they're basically, you know in the old, like, you look in your history books, you've got cavemen. And there was never really any overweightness then. Because, basically, people had to get up in the morning and run and get their food. So the body metabolism kickstarts and it goes for it. Right, and it knows it's going to get food. Now, I'm not just picking on, like, I'm not picking on people that are overweight at all. It sounds like I am, but I really don't mean anything like that. I'm just trying to show you there's reason why we hold weight. Some people in the genetics hold more weight than others, right? It's in the genetics, right? So there are good reasons for it, but you can reverse that by increasing alkalinity if you want to. So, so you're actually, people that are slightly overweight are slightly more protected and more safe than people underweight when it comes to acid. Because the acid will just go for your organs. <coughs> and that's, that's the real danger zone. So when you're actually underweight and over acidic, you're in a real danger zone. So the people that are slightly out holding a little bit more weight are slightly more protected. I'm not, not giving a good reason, but that, there's some other good benefits to being slightly overweight as well. Now, if you're interested in getting um, your alkaline up, we can just email me, I can give, give you some really interesting recipes and I'll give you a list of foods as well that are either alkaline or acidic so you know the difference between the two. For instance, in, um, how to explain it really easy. Sugar equals acidity, acidity equals glue. It slows you down. Your blood, you know your blood's got negative charge and your cells in your blood, you've got a negative charge which keeps them repelling from each other and keeps them sticky, keeps them from being sticky. The reason it happens to sticky blood is because you're over acidic. The charge loses in the cells, this blood becomes sticky, and then the diabetes, <coughs> the heart disease, and the various other things kick in.